Hello dear ones, it's, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about the situation that light workers find themselves in now at the time of ascension. And I realize this information is going to be a little bit controversial. So I ask you to take from it what is helpful to you and not to be concerned about what you disagree with or what you don't believe in and like that. There's this, it's not my intention to, to try to make you believe something, but just just to help uh, to help in the ascension process if possible. So with that word of warning, <laughs> I'll proceed. Um, so, most of the light workers and pathfinders and way showers, uh, the many such that are on earth today, have been here for a very, very long time. And when they came into the third dimension from much higher dimensions, uh, they were subject and the fourth dimension, the astral realm. They were subject to what I would call interference on this planet. This planet is very far from the central sun. And uh, so there are times when it is uh, directly receiving a, a lot of light and information from the central sun. And there are times when it is not. And in the times when it is not, we here on Earth, we're, we're increasingly subject as the tide changes and goes down. The tide of light changes and goes down. I think over 120,000 year period, is that it? Um, we're increasingly subjected to interference of many kinds. Um, some of it has to do with the light itself. The light itself is not the same. Uh, the, the frequencies of light that are available to us are not the same. I think I see a chickadee. And also there, there are solar storms and electromagnetic radiation that, that change our um, genetics from time to time. And um, uh, there has been, um, in the astral realm, interference of many, many different kinds in the fourth dimension of people uh, from other places that have come in with agendas different from that of this free will planet and, uh, and of human beings. And uh, so I'm sure you've heard the stories of all the different ways in which our, during the times of low light, our, our um, bodies of light suffer some changes, necessary changes to adjust to uh, the decreasing availability of frequencies, light frequencies. And so what's preserved is that which will keep us, our souls, on earth um, with as much star knowledge as possible, which in this great interval has, has, has changed to a kind of um, a kind of a sequestering or or sleeping of of a great deal of, of our information about the magnificence of our souls, right? And what's needed now, as you know, are keys to turn it on, and those keys are, are becoming increasingly available available with the flooding in through the stargates of the new light. Okay, but so. Back to the situation we find ourselves in now as we begin to receive this new light, okay? In our bodies of light, there are distortions of the light that have occurred because of this necessary saving of the most vital information to keep us here on Earth during the long winter of light. <laughs> and we have, uh, as... Our mission here on Earth has been to, to bring light, to show the path and to bring the light for 
all humanity. So through our incarnations, we have striven to keep the light for the people, to hold the, the, the torch of knowledge and love and light for the people. But because of the very nature of the third dimension into which Earth has slipped, uh, this is the realm of duality. This is the realm of, of light and dark, of, of great polarities, okay? And so these polarities manifest in many ways. Um, one is within the individual soul field. So through many um, incarnations, maybe hundreds of incarnations or more, the light worker has increase, increased the light in the soul field, but has also intensified the darkness in the soul field, at least in the third and fourth dimensions. Of course, we always exist in many other dimensions, but the problem is we have forgotten that, that saving, life-saving information, that great information as the light descended, right? We have the key to the knowledge, but, but the knowledge is not quite, the door is not quite open yet in some, to, some, to some of the knowledge, although I'm sure you've all received some keys and some door openings by now, okay? So, so this is kind of, um, just so that you understand, the keys will also unlock all the darkness in you, all right? And there will be considerable darkness and the reason for this is, because of the great light, it's a balanced situation, okay? Because in your soul purpose, you believe in light, the darkness is hidden in, in your subconscious and unconscious minds. And so, it may be a little uncomfortable to be uncovering all this, especially through all your many incarnations at one time. You have, may have incarnations that are very, very dark and in alternate worlds that have spun off from the choices that you've made in all these incarnations. There may be um, choices just the diametrically opposed, absolutely bright, okay? And in the middle, all, all the ranges of choices that need to be brought back to the light of consciousness now and resolved and transformed through love. Okay. So, so I'm just explaining that if things start changing and things, and things start coming up to you that seem to be very improbable because like me, your mission is to bring light to the world, to, sh to find the path, to show the way, like that, to to anchor light to earth and transform the earth. And suddenly you're confronted with all kinds of things, all kinds of incredible incarnations where, where maybe you were very, very behaving in a very, very dark way, as opposed to the saintly way you, you, you behaved in another incarnation. Just the thing to do is to understand that that is the nature of this these two realms, third dimension and fourth dimension, and and don't judge yourself for that, you know, and and don't worry about that, and don't don't hesitate to let it come up and be resolved. Okay, so there's that. Fifty fifty, about almost all the time, we may see only the fifty percent bright light, totally socially acceptable me, you know, <laughs> or whatever. And so, hidden in the deep, dark recesses is, is stuff that would chill your bones to the marrow. <laughs> You'd be surprised, but that's just, it's not the nature of you, it's not the nature of me, it's not the nature of our eternal soul, you know, and that's something to keep in mind. It's just something that happened because of the light dipping down, and now the light is coming back, and we're coming into full conscious of all of our magnificence. So that's about light workers and the individual soul and how this thing plays out um, during the dips, the down dips. There is one other thing to take 
to keep in mind, and that has to do with... Mm, so, we talked about choices on the moment and the splitting off of choices into alternate worlds, right? I make a very bright choice, I got a counter with a very dark choice, and a bunch of choices in between. Okay, these are incarnational balancings of the polarities. Do you understand? Light, dark, everything in between. Coming back together and, and merging in the heart. The heart is a great, like, cauldron of, of, um, of, of light and love that, that accepts and transforms all this. All right, so that's just one way, incarnational, like light splitting. Um, then you have splitting between people. Okay, there within your soul group, there may be people who, in your current timeline, are, are manifesting very dark or very light or someplace in between, and yet in other timelines, same what we said, they are manifesting exactly the opposite. Why in this timeline do they seem to be diametrically opposite to you in the socially acceptable context? Because that's another way of balancing the light, okay? That's another way of balancing it, intersoul, how would you say it? Be among various souls, you know? Or not even in your soul group, but just in the context of the souls with whom you are interacting right now, okay? Like these, the play of Leela. Same, same in the, in the world today. Uh, they're trying to, I, as I understand it, the light the light workers who deal with the grids of light, uh, who are no doubt not just human beings, but many star brethren, or there's a lot of angels, there's a lot of help in, in balancing out Earth's grids of light as, as more and more light comes in and sp like spreading it around, um, I think. <laughs> so, but... But if there is a very dark place on Earth, like uh, the, I, I heard from, um, I heard that the 33rd parallel is being worked on right now, and uh, some of the maps I sh see show that to be Los Angeles and Iraq are, are right on the same parallel, and uh, some other hot spots in the world too. So there, where the light is like beginning to balance out, uh, according to um, According to some of what I've read, it, that is uh, like counterbalancing the light at the equator, which is very different. The, in other words, the grid work is, is, is attempting to balance out by light and dark, and hopefully eventually have the same equal light everywhere, I think. Eventually. Uh, let's see. So we have timeline, uh, within a timeline, uh, in various dimensions, between timelines. There are a lot of different ways that we can find. So you may see a very dark event taking place on Earth, um, according to the news, right? And yet, at the same time, something is happening to counter that. Some, some very bright thing is happening to counter that, which no doubt will not be in the news, see? So, or... Something very dark will happen in one place, and then the next day, something very, or, or simultaneously, something very bright will happen right there. You see? So there's always a way to balance it. Whether between souls, uh, among souls, or within one's own soul, th spread throughout one's own timelines, or perhaps through the various dimensions, because there's no way that this dimension, uh, this very deep, dark dimension, the third dimension and the fourth dimension could exist at all, were we not also that which is of the stars, the very highest, the twelfth dimension, and on down. So, as we become more aware of that, of that affinity, of that resonance with the greatest light, we are going to, we are going to, to heal up the inconsistencies in our light bodies, and it will, it will all, it will all be okay. In my vision, uh, there are teams. I, th I think I've told you this before. Ten thousand per person. I mean, incredible teams of light workers from the highest dimensions on down are helping each of us 
to adjust to the light. And um, we, should, we should feel wonderful about this because as we adjust to the light, we are helping the entire galaxy and in fact the entire universe to change upward in that way too. We are part of all this. And we get that great help from all of our celestial ascension teams because we too are doing our part, our very difficult part, in reintegrating all this. And, and we're looked upon by our teams as great heroes. Okay, so don't be disheartened, fellow light workers. Do not be disheartened. Just open your heart, accept the light. Be at peace, be in love, be in light, be one again, be unity, be harmony, and that within your beautiful multi-dimensional self. <laughs> God bless you all.